I am now able to do like a ventriloquist, stand in this place and send my voice way over there. You can laugh at these jokes, darling, because the jokes are not going to get any better, I promise. Thank you. Now, in case you're wondering who I am, and sometimes I wonder who I am, my name is Temujin. That's T-E-M-U-J-I-N. I am a storyteller. This is true. I do lie for a living, which makes me unusual amongst men, because I know all the women are saying, yes, all men are liars, and it's true. But I admit to being a liar, which is something most men will not do. Now, and I'm allowed to do it here. When I go home, I'm not allowed to lie at all about anything, ever. And she's shaking her head and smiling and saying, yeah, right, that's a lie right there. <laughs> well, I am not allowed to lie. It doesn't mean that I don't. And any man that doesn't occasionally tell the sweet lies to the women in his life lives by himself in his mom's basement. You better believe that when I tell it to you. See, oh, you know guys like this. You're too young to know guys. Never mind, never, never mind, never mind, never mind. Now, most of the time, if not all of the time, when I start my presentation, I use a drum. I do that so that I can draw a crowd, stir up interest, and uh, drum up business. Drum up business. <laughs> I told you you got to... Thank you, sir. No, no, that's okay. Because a groan is every bit as good as a laugh. You may not have got it, but you heard it. And that's what's important. Now... <laughs> Now is the time. This is the place. Now is the time, and uh, this is the place. I am Temujin. I am a storyteller, and I am here to tell stories. Stories of various and assorted kind. Stories both old and new, from near and far. Stories that just might answer some of the mysteries of the ages. On the banks of the Nile River, in the city of Luxor, there was born a boy child, a prince. And everybody treated him like a prince. It's important you should treat a prince like a prince. But since he was the first of the boy children to be born, because all of his sisters were much older, everyone was very, very happy that finally there was going to be a prince of the realm. Now all children, if they have folks around them who love them, get spoiled. You got spoiled, didn't you, babe? You got spoiled real good, didn't you? Because you got a big smile on yourself when I said that. <laughs> but that's okay. Getting spoiled is not necessarily a bad thing, unless it gets out of hand, which is what happened to this young prince. His name was Amenhotep. But as time went on, he got it in his head that he was just too good. Too good. If his cousins came around, he wouldn't play with them because he was too good for that. If his servants would, they, I'm, I'm just too good for that. And I'm too good for that, and I'm too good for this, and I'm too good for the other. And after a while, where he couldn't hear it, people started calling him Prince Too Good. Because he was just too good. I'm too good to eat that. I'm too good to wear that. Oh, it's too hot outside. I'm too good to be going out in that kind of heat. And people would think, well, this is Egypt. It's hot around here. I, I, I'm, I'm just too good. And as he got to the age where he might be thinking about getting a wife so that he could produce an heir to succeed him on the throne, every suitor, every princess that came was not good enough for him. He was just too good good. And they tried hard. A Viking princess came, had a long ship, and there were a hundred Vikings rowing. And they brought treasure from the Northlands, things that he had never seen, polar bear skins and seal skins. And he looked and said, what am I going to do with those dusty things? And what am I going to do with you? I'm too good for you. I, you can't marry me. Well, another princess came up the Nile.
big crew of men, she had diamonds, she had gold, she had gotten it all from King Solomon's mind. You've heard about King Solomon's mind. Yes, gotten it all from King Solomon's mind. She was carried on a throne of gold by giant servants, rippling muscles, carried her into the palace, and she stepped down and ate, sprinkled rose petals in front of her. Everyone thought, she's got to be good enough. Look at her. She's, she's rich and beautiful. And he looked at her and said, anybody who's got to walk on rose petals is not good enough for me. I'm just too good. That's what I am. I am way too good. Well, she didn't know what to do. What do you do when a man tells you he's too good for you? If you're smart, you walk away and leave that dummy standing there all by himself. Ladies, there are a lot of men out there like that still. They just don't say it to you. If, 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 if a man, regardless of his age, acts like he's too good for you, walk away leave that dummy standing there, which is just what she did. She walked away and left that dummy standing there. Well, one day, there was a great rumbling in the sky, and this cloud came down, this purple cloud came down and into the palace and into the throne room, and when the cloud went away, there standing was a genie princess. Iridescent blue, and really, really, really beautiful. And the prince looked at her and said, well, what am I going to do with that? You're not even human, and you're blue! What, what are our children going to look like? I'm going to have a bunch of blue kids running around. No! I am much too good for you. And it continued. I don't care where they came from. I don't care how rich they were. I don't care. It, 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 uh, it didn't matter. Really? It honest. Cross my heart. It didn't matter. All of them were not good enough for him because he was Prince Too Good. And he was too good for all of that. Well, many months passed. And one day, a princess came riding a half-lame horse. She had one servant on a donkey. And the, the servant was old. And he was tall and his feet dragged the ground because the donkey was so short. And when they approached the palace, the guard said, May I help you? He said, Yes, I'm a princess and I've come to, to offer myself in marriage to the prince. And the guard said, <laughs> You? No, I don't think so. Not you. But I am a princess. And you must take me in to see the prince. And so they took her in to see the prince. And the prince looked at her and said, <laughs> You? Look at you. You're in rags and tatters and and your daddy, and I saw that horse you were riding, and your servant. Couldn't you get him something a little bigger to ride so his feet don't drag the ground? Marry you? Never. I am much too good for you. I'm too good to even talk to you. And he just stood there with his nose turned up. And the princess looked at him and said, You're too good for me. You're too good for me. You were too good for the Viking princess. You were too good for the princess that came from King Solomon's mind. You were too good for the genie princess. And now you're too good for me? No, you're not. And she began to spin. And she spun until when she stopped spinning, she had turned into a tawny leopard. And her servant did one quick jump and a spin, and there he was, a black leopard. And the two of them grabbed Prince Too Good. One went one way and one went the other and they tore him in half and threw his pieces up in the air. She ate one half and the servant ate the other. And the tawny leopard growled, I might have not been good enough to marry you, but you were definitely good enough to eat. And she leapt out of the window and her servant followed and they loped off towards the Nile and were never seen again. So if you think you're too good, it's okay. You're allowed to think whatever you want. But don't go around treating folks like you're too good because you may not like the result of it. And that is the story of Prince Too Good. <laughs>